Good morning. Welcome to Where the Wild Books Are. I'm Miss Mary, Storytime Programmer here at the Faulkner County Library in Conway, Arkansas. And I'm so glad that you're here today. This week we are exploring healthy habits, so I'm very excited. I've got some cool books and a couple of songs to share with you today. So like we always do, we're gonna get started with our bread and butter hello. So rub your hands together, get them warmed up, bend your fingers a little bit, and here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam, let's say hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quickly as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Here we go, I've got my little word to help me. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as nicely as we can. Hello, good morning, yeah. All right, so, you know, we all do our best to stay safe and healthy, but sometimes we still get sick. And sometimes when we get sick, we have to go see Mm -hmm. the doctor. And sometimes it's a little bit scary, but usually everything is just fine. So I found this really neat book titled A Visit to Dr. Duck, and it's by Rosemary Wells, who created Max and Ruby, and it's published by Candlewick Press. And I hope you like it as much as I do. Here we go. At bedtime, Felix ate too many chocolate lumpies and stayed up way too late. And I think he jumped on the bed as well. Now in the morning, Felix's mama made pancakes. Mmm, yummy. But Felix said, no, please. You look peaky, Felix, said Felix's mama. Does Felix look peaky to you? He does to me. Let's get you toasty and warm, she said. Then Felix's mama made Felix a cup of chamomile tea. I like to drink chamomile tea when I feel peaky too. Do you feel better yet? asked Felix's mama. No, said Felix. So his mama gave him some sugared prunes. You'll feel better with the prunes, she said. Do you think Felix will feel better after he eats the sugared prunes? Well, let's see. Not feeling perkier, said Felix as he slumped over in the chair. Fresh air will give you a boost, said Felix's mama. Sometimes fresh air does give me a boost too. She bundled Felix up and put him outside on his motorcycle. Then Felix's mama listened at the window Felix was not making his motorcycle noises. Oh my word. Something is wrong with my Felix, she said. So Felix's mama called the doctor. Bring him right over, said Dr. Duck. Don't be afraid, my little moonbeam, said Felix's mama. But Felix was afraid. What do you think Felix is afraid of? Hmm. Felix was afraid the doctor would ask his mama to leave the room. Mm, yeah, I can understand that. But Dr. Duck did not ask Felix's mama to leave the room. Dr. Duck let Felix's mama stay with him the whole time. Dr. Duck listened to Felix hard. Ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. Dr. Duck looked at Felix's ears and took his temperature. Then he gave Felix two spoonfuls of happy tummy and said, call me in the morning. Felix slept all the way home. He didn't wake up until he smelled 
Ooh, butter toast and lemon tea. Do you think Felix is feeling better? <gasps> there they are at breakfast. Tomorrow, let's go to the circus and the movies and the fun house, said Felix. Hmm, how about a picnic in the canoe, said Felix's mama. We'll do it all, said Felix. And I think he is feeling better. There he is, jumping on his bed again. So this book also has Dr. Duck's tips for staying perky, like eat five fruits or vegetables every day and drink plenty of water, get 10 hours of sleep every night, wash your hands with soap and warm water after sneezing, playing, or using the bathroom, and always wash your hands before you eat. Go outside, play, laugh, and sing every day, and of course, read aloud together every day. And that's the end of a visit to Dr. Duck. I love that book, and I can understand why Felix was scared, but Felix didn't need to be scared. Felix's mama got to stay with him the whole time they were at the doctor. Okay, now we are gonna do something a little bit silly. So, did you know that I've lost my farmer's hat? I sure have. So this is going to be my farmer's bonnet. What do you think? I think it'll keep the um the sun off of me. Okay. Well, what am I? Oh, I'm also going to be using in this this week's craft. Isn't it cute? You can sign up and get the stuff to make this at home, including this box of Kleenex. I'm so glad I have it because I'm going to need a tissue. All right. So farmer's note. Farmer's nose twitches, and I am going to see a chew, a chew, a chew, <laughs> a chew, a chew, a chew. See, I'm so glad I have these tissues here to catch my sneezes. But guess what? Farmer Miss Mary is not the only one with the sneezes today. Guess who else has the sneezes? Cow, that's right. Cow's nose tingles, cow's nose twitches, and cow is going to sneeze. Do you, do you know what it's going to sound like? Here we go. Moo choo, moo choo, moo choo. Can you sneeze like the cow? Let's go. Moo choo, moo choo, moo choo. Oh my goodness, cow. I hope you feel better soon. Oh. Avery, thank you so much. I'm glad you like my earrings. I'm glad that you're a rainbow too. Oh, guess who else has the sneezes? <gasps> Pig's nose tingles. Pig's nose twitches and Pig is going to sneeze. Guess what it sounds like? Oink choo, oink choo, oink choo. Can you sneeze like this pig? Let's try it. Oink choo, oink choo, oink choo. Oh goodness, I'm glad I have so many tissues. Oh, there's one less an next animal that I think, I think this animal has the, the sneezes too. It's the chicken. Oh, chicken's nose is tingling. Chicken's nose is twitching and chicken is going to sneeze. Guess what it's gonna sound like? Buck choo, buck choo, buck choo. You wanna try that? Let's do it together. Buck choo, buck choo, buck choo. <laughs> Oh goodness, that was so fun, that was so silly. Okay, so after you sneeze <coughs> and after you cough, even if you remember and catch it in your elbow like you're supposed to do, what do we need to do next? Yep, wash our hands. That's right, we gotta wash our hands. And did you know that to get our hands safe and clean, we have to lather them in soap for 20 whole seconds? That's right. Well, most people don't have a timer at the sink, so how can you make sure you're rubbing your hands together in that soap for 20 whole seconds? I'll tell you my secret. I sing a song when I wash my hands, and I'm gonna show it to you. I like this song because it also helps you remember to wash all the different parts of your hands, okay? It goes like this. But let's talk about our hands real quick. I'm gonna call this part of my hand the top, I'm gonna call the palm of my hand the bottom. And when I say in between, I mean in between my fingers. And then fingertips are right here. So they're right in between your fingers. And then where are your thumbs? That's right, you know where your thumbs are. These are your thumbs. Great, you're gonna love 
this song. Here we go. <gasps> tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Don't forget your fingertips, don't forget your fingertips till they're clean, till they're clean. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Don't forget your thumbs, don't forget your thumbs, now they're clean. <gasps> Rinse them off. And that song times out between 21 and 24 seconds, depending on how slowly or quickly you sing it. And then you can rinse your hands off and you know that you've washed them long enough to get them good and clean. Or, like when I was a teacher, I did keep a timer by the sink a lot. And then I have one up here at the library that we used to measure in Explorers Club too. So that's always kind of fun. All right, so we talked about washing our hands, but did you know that part of being safe and healthy, sometimes you gotta wash like your whole entire body. What do we call that? Maybe taking a bath or a shower? Yeah. So of course I thought we should read one of my favorite books. The Pigeon Needs a Bath. I do not. Words and Pictures by Mo Willems and published by Hyperion Books for Children. And look, do you guys recognize that character? Yeah, it's the bus driver and he says hi. I don't know if you've noticed, but the pigeon is filthy. So I could use your help because the pigeon needs a bath. And Pigeon says, that is a matter of opinion. Hm. What a kidder. I don't really need a bath. I took one last month. Hm. I think it was last month. Clean, dirty, they're just words, right? I feel clean. Maybe you need a bath. Do you need a bath? Hm. Yeah. When was the last time you had a bath? When was it? Oh, that was pretty recently. Life is so short, why waste it on unimportant things? Like taking a bath. What smell? I don't smell anything. And if I do, it's a very normal smell for a pigeon. You know, in some places, it is impolite to bathe. All of these flies buzzing around me are purely coincidental. Oh, pee, ew, yuck. Let's get out of here. Take a bath, dude. I don't think those flies like how pigeons smell. And pigeon says, okay, fine. If it means so much to you, I'll take a bath. Whoa, I'm not going to like this one bit. Okay. The water is too hot, too cold, too lukewarm, too hot, too wet, too cold, not enough toys, too many toys, oh, too deep, not deep enough, too cold, now it's too hot again. Ooh, too reflective. That is still too hot. Well, I guess this is okay. Splash! I'm sure none of you have ever splashed in the tub. <laughs> hey, this is fun. Wash, wash, washy, la, 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 singing in the tub. Ooh, this is the life. I love bubbles. Look at my wrinkly toes. Look at that. Look at those wrinkly toes. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm fine. I'm a fish, I'm a fish. I think Pigeon is really enjoying this bath after all. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, I think I'm right because 10 hours later, that's a really long time, Pigeon is still in the tub and Pigeon says, can I stay in the tub forever? And that's the end of The Pigeon Needs a Bath. <laughs> How many of you like to take baths? They're so much fun. I especially love bubble baths. Okay. 
Now, one of the things that you might have seen, and some of you might even have, are things that we put over our nose and our mouth to help keep each other safe. Yeah, face mask. That's one way that we can stay safe and healthy. And I got a new face mask last week. I want you to see it. It's kind of special. Yeah, it's a face mask with clear plastic so that you can see my mouth. And I have one of my friends here because we learned a new song about our face mask that we want to share with you. We like it a whole lot. So this is my friend Corduroy. Some of you may know Corduroy's story. And I'm going to sit Corduroy up here on my shoulder and we're going to sing you this song about our new face mask. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. My new face mask, how I love my face mask. My new face mask, it helps keep us safe. You will wear it on your face, yes, and it must be in place. On your mouth, on your mouth, and your nose, and your nose. Both of those, both of those. Bye. 